Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great night. I'm looking forward to a great day. I'm having trouble with the live stream again today. I don't know what's going on, but um, I don't have any picture. So even though camera tells me that it's on, I can't seem to get a live stream. So sorry about that. Um, we do have a couple birthdays to celebrate. Yesterday was Chris Hoffman's birthday, so happy birthday, Chris. Hope you had a great birthday, and today is Cheyenne Wickett's birthday. So happy birthday, Cheyenne. Hope you have a great day today. Uh, the cat photo of the day is, this is the winner of the week, and it says, Buddy is dueling ukuleles, or, or uh, the new dueling banjos. Michael Scott of Madison, Wisconsin writes, Buddy is a sweet boy who loves to snuggle with my ukuleles, even though the instrument's nickname is the Jumping Flea. His favorite toy is an old boot lace, and his favorite treat is a dab of mayonnaise licked from my finger. Whatever gets those creative juices flowing. That's, that's really funny. The uh, shoelace makes sense. The mayonnaise... Not so much, but you know, Lucy, Lucy likes weird things too. She likes, um, spaghetti sauce, which really she shouldn't have because of the garlic and it can be hard on her tummy, <clears throat> but, uh, she really likes, um, spaghetti sauce. She likes, um, yogurt. She likes, um, applesauce. She, she likes cheese. She, she likes bacon. She, she likes pretty much everything she's not supposed to have. Kind of kind of like people. She uh, she likes those things. So today we are looking at John 12, 1 through 11. This is the anointing at Bethany. Um, and it says, The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Verse 3. <clears throat> In your favorite movie, whether a 1950s classic romance or a contemporary thriller, you can probably name a scene during which the world stands still. A first kiss, perhaps the last surge of courage in the face of death. Whatever the movement, it's unforgettable. The aroma of Mary's perfume poured out over the rough calluses of Jesus' feet creates such a moment. The world, the world stands still. Made from precious nard, that perfume would have cost nearly a year's wages. It was meant to anoint a body for burial. But on this night, Mary pours it out, all of it, on Jesus' feet. Breathe deeply. Take in the fragrance. Feel the love that binds Mary and Jesus together. Judas breaks this moment with an angry question, not from his heart, but from his pocketbook. Even in the church, we juggle pocketbook and heart. But isn't the love the Savior? and fleshed every time we receive his body and blood, worth pouring out both heart and treasure, no matter the cost? Let us pray. Jesus, Mary poured out all she had for you. May we be bold and do the same. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Yeah, it's Holy Week. And so we get down to um, maybe the most drama, the, the, the really dramatic part of the story. Um, <clears throat> and not in a pejorative way, but just that... There's so much that happens this week um, that it's uh, it's just gut wrenching. Um, we want to be, I want to be at Easter already. I want to celebrate the resurrection. I don't want to have to go through the rest of it. Um, but you know, Jesus tells us it doesn't work that way. Uh, far from it. Uh, we cannot have resurrection without suffering and death first. And Mary of Bethany, um, at least in John, that's who it is, um, she seems to understand that in a way that the others don't. And so she helps him get ready. 
and she anoints him um, with this costly nard that would have cost a great deal of money. <clears throat> and if, you know, the average household income or average um, wage, I should say, the average wage in the United States is around $52,000 this year. Um, and that's what we're talking about for the, the price of this nard. Um, it was, it was truly an extravagant gift and, um, poured it out over his feet. What a, a beautiful, lovely, incredible gift that she gave him. And, uh, of course it was not appreciated by everyone. Judas, Judas, uh, thought that the money should have been used differently uh, mostly so that he could have had gotten his hands on it. But um, that was not, it's not the way it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be an anointing and a gift, and, um, and that's how Jesus received it. So, you know, we, we may not be able to do that for him. We may not be able to do that for each other. Um, but there are ways that we can offer our love and in a sacrificial way i think the the most precious thing we have is time um it's it's the one thing that we have in the moment and it's the one thing that we can never get back uh, we can't go back to yesterday and tomorrow's not here yet so we only have today so the question for jesus places for to all of us I mean he poses to all of us is what are we going to do with the time that we have you know what are what are we going to do today to demonstrate his love for us to one another how are we going to do that today uh, it's a great question and maybe maybe that has yet to unfold but certainly <clears throat> there are ways we can do that um, I was talking with the kids yesterday, um, we can pray, we can listen to our parents, we can be kind to our siblings. Um, and for us as adults, that doesn't mean just biological. It's, it's also our, the members of our human family. Uh, what, what do our, our human siblings need from us? How can we be loving and more lovely toward others, especially those with whom we disagree? How, how can we show them love? Um, and maybe it's, it's to agree to disagree. Um, I don't think it's clobbering each other over the head with why I'm right and you're wrong or why you're right and I'm wrong. I don't, I don't think that's very loving. I think that uh, maybe agreeing to disagree is the way to go. And, uh, and focus instead on what we have in common rather than focusing on the things we disagree about. I don't know. It just seems to me that that's, that is a lost art. And, uh, and of course, it also seems that there's more things that we disagree about than agree about. And I think that's valid. But that being said, we might find more things that we agree about if we focused on those things instead of focusing only on the things that we disagree about. And it's in that agreeing that we can perhaps anoint each other, um, perhaps pour some of that nard on each other and, um, on each other's feet that is, and, uh, and learn how to live together and more peace and harmony and certainly than what we're doing now. So that's what I have for you today. Just love. That's, that was, was doing some reading for Monday, Thursday this morning. <coughs> and, um, someone, someone pointed out that, that we love each other was literally the dying wish of Jesus. That, that was his last commandment to us, is that we learned to love each other. And I wonder, I wonder how we can do that today. I wonder how I can do that today. I don't know. The day is young. And hopefully as the day unfolds, 
we can all show a little more love than anything else. So have a great day today. Do what you can to bring some love and light into the world. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you back here tomorrow.